As we mentioned earlier in this broadcast, the Senate has been working this week and through the Saturday and Sunday to finalize a $95 billion deal in foreign aid. There's a package for Ukraine, there's one for Israel, one for Taiwan. Final passage is expected next week. And for more on this, we want to turn to Democratic Senator Chris Van Holland of Maryland who joins us live once again. Senator, thanks for being with us. Why did you need to go back to work this weekend to get these packages through when a lot of the, some of this stuff had been negotiated previously? Uh, Tom, it's great to be with you uh, this morning. Well, it, as you know, we went down a path to try to include border security uh, issues. Um, everybody agreed we need to tackle them. Republicans insisted that border security be part of the national security proposal. Uh, then after there was a bipartisan agreement reached, uh, Republicans ran away from it because Donald Trump said, do not work on a thing that solves the border. I want to keep that open for political reasons mm -hmm. uh, in November. A really outrageous uh, statement and also outrageous that all the Republicans just fell in line. So we took the border security piece out. It is mm -hmm. absolutely essential. Uh, that we provide this military assistance to the people of Ukraine who remain under severe attack uh, from uh, Vladimir Putin. And uh, they're spilling blood. They're losing their lives. The least we can do is continue to provide them with the military assistance they need. But, Senator, you know, the Senate's always been kind of looked at as the grown-ups in the room up on the Hill. Is there any confidence from your standpoint after what you just laid out that even if the Senate comes to an agreement on this, that it could run into problems in the House, which at times seems to be in disarray? Uh, Tom, I do think that uh, when we get this out of the Senate, and I, I think we will, uh, that the House will take this up uh, at some point. I mean, I know the Speaker uh, has sort of shown, thrown some shade on it, but I, I do think that when push comes to shove, people will recognize that you cannot abandon uh, Ukraine to Putin, not only because it's important to protect democracy and sovereignty in Ukraine, but autocrats all over the world are watching very closely what we do, as are our allies. Uh, and we would send a terrible message and undermine all our credibility around the world with both allies and adversaries uh, if we don't step up to the plate here. Hey, Senator, I want to get your reaction to the special counsel's report this past week clearing President Biden of criminal charges in his own documents case. However, ending that report with some pretty eye-popping statements about the president's memory, his mental faculties right now. What did you make of that? And was that appropriate in a special counsel's report that ultimately decided that no uh, crime, uh, criminal charges were going to be brought? Well, Tom, look, I've been with the president uh, on many occasions in the Oval Office at various events, uh, and he is on his game. Uh, and the record he's, ac he's accumulated uh, shows that, his record uh, for the country. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty outrageous, as the president himself stated, uh, that um, the special prosecutor questioned his memory of his son's death, uh, Bo's death. That was just totally uncalled for. Uh, so, listen, you, you have uh, this report, and within the last 48 hours, you have the other candidate for president, mm -hmm. Donald Trump, essentially saying, Vladimir Putin, if NATO countries aren't spending enough for their defense, you should go after them. I mean, here's a statement from the leading Republican candidate for president saying, Putin, eh. I'll look the other way if you attack one of these NATO countries, if, if they're not doing enough to defend themselves. Everyone should recognize how outrageous that statement is. Let's stay on the politics beat for a moment, because a couple of years ago, then Maryland Governor Larry Hogan made a big deal of announcing that he was not going to run against you. Now this past week, we get news from the former governor that he is going to run for the Maryland U.S. Senate seat. He'd like to be your colleague. How fundamentally does this change the race in Maryland, Senator? Uh, well, Tom, it will be a very competitive race, and, and no Democratic uh, Senate nominee should take it for granted. Uh, I, I do think that Maryland voters will recognize the difference uh, between the governorship uh, and a U U.S. Senate uh, seat, especially one that will be the deciding factor, <clears throat> excuse me, in 
whether Mitch McConnell controls the Senate, you know, along with Ted Cruz, uh, Josh Hawley, and that whole gang, uh, or whether Democrats uh, control the Senate, because the Senate is a virtually 50-50, uh, uh, and Maryland will tip the balance. So mm -hmm. I think voters in Maryland will recognize that they don't want to hand control over to the Senate, uh, to, to Mitch McConnell and, and Ted Cruz and, and that gang. What do you think is the political makeup of the state right now in that you had a Republican governor elected twice and reelected by wide margins the second time, now running with probably Donald Trump at the top of that ticket? Does that alter maybe some of the voting dynamics or some of the political sways, especially in Maryland, which was always looked at as a, as a firm seat for Democrats? Well, that's right. I mean, at the top of the Republican ticket will be <clears throat> Donald Trump. Uh, and I do think that that will be a factor. Uh, but again, the overriding factor, I think, will be uh, that, you know, voting for Larry Hogan for United States Senate is voting for <clears throat> Mitch McConnell and, and Republican control of the Senate. And that means a whole different set of policies uh, that I do not think uh, will reflect the will of the people of the state of Maryland. So, uh, I think that will be a big uphill battle uh, in that regard. Well, it's already been an interesting uh, political season. It just got a little more interesting in Maryland today. U.S. Senator Chris Van Hollen, we appreciate you joining us live this Sunday morning on the Hill. Good to be with you.